Welcome back to my channel, Easy Math with Miss Easley. If you've been watching my tutorials, then welcome back. If you're new to the channel, I wanted to explain a little bit about what this channel is all about. So I am a math teacher who has taught third, fourth, and fifth grade math. And I thought this year that it would be really great to have a video for every objective that I teach, and then it can help students review. So I hope you enjoy my videos. I hope they help you understand these math concepts even better. And I hope you enjoy all of my fun illustrated problems and some of my Minecraft examples. And my ultimate goal is just for you all to have more math confidence. So let's get started. Today's lesson is all about solving equations. This is lesson 22, so let's dig in. Let's check in with Henry and see how he's doing. Well, I've been counting my jalapenos to make sure I have enough for the week. I only have 28, and I know I'm going to need 45 to really get through the week. So how much do I need to order? I'm trying to figure it out. Can you guys help me? Before we can help Henry and Howard solve their problem, we need to first learn a little bit about how to solve an equation. So remember that an equation has an equal sign and an expression does not. So in this picture, I'm wanting to show you that the left side of the equal sign needs to equal the right side. They need to be balanced. So in their problem, he has 28 jalapenos. He needs to know how many more to order. So we have a little bit of a mystery here. I'm going to use the letter J to represent the jalapenos. And we can really use any letter we want to represent the amount that we don't know yet. I like to also call it a mystery number. Okay, so he has 28 jalapenos, he needs to order more, and he knows that he needs 45 to get through the whole week. So there's a couple ways you could do this. You know, you could just think about what number could go there that would get you from 28 up to 45, so you could, you could count. That might take a little bit too long. So the, the quickest way is to do the opposite. So if there's 28 jalapenos over here, what we can do is take them away. So subtract is the opposite of add. And if we do something over here, we got to be balanced. We've got to do the same thing over here. We could take away 28 jalapenos from the total, and then we'd be left with what we need to order. So let's do that for him. Okay, I regrouped. I took a 10 away and put 10 ones over here. 15 minus eight is seven. Three minus two is one. So now over here, I have 28 minus 28. Well, that's just nothing. I could just rewrite it as just J equals, and then I've got 17. Okay, so he needs 17 more jalapenos to really have enough for the week. Now let's try one with some decimal numbers. I have 10.5 on this side of the equal sign, and it needs to be equal to a mystery number plus 6.7, 6 and 7 tenths. So pause the video and see if you can find the amount for D. Okay, let's check your work. We're going to take away that amount from this side. We really want to get this letter by itself. So then we have to subtract from this side. And let's see what we get. Hey, Henry. 
Well, hey, Howard. How many hours can you work this week? I can work 30 hours. Okay, that's great, Howard. Well, I've got $330 in my budget to pay you this week. Oh, well, that sounds pretty good. Well, Howard, let's make sure that's paying you enough. How can we figure out how much that is per hour? If you're working 30 hours and I have $330, how much is that per hour? Can you guys help us again? Now we can help Henry figure out his problem of how much money per hour is he going to be able to give Howard. So I wrote it one way, 30 hours times his pay equals 330. We're going to try to figure out how much per hour he gets. It can also be written like this, though. I want to show you another way. When a number is bumped right up next to a variable or a letter, it means to multiply. So 30 of these equals 330. Now for this problem, you can probably guess, just like the last one, that there's more than one way to solve this. One way would be to be thinking, okay, 30 times something equals 330. You could start with something you know, so we know that 30 times 10, let's see what that equals, 3 times 1 is 3, and then there's two zeros, so I'm going to put two zeros in my product. Okay, so it's more than $10 per hour, and then we might be able to go ahead and try going up one number. So we know that 3 times 11 is 33, and we can stick one zero in the product, and we got our number. So it must be that P equals 11. There's also another way to solve this. What is the opposite of multiplication? Good division. So if we divide this side by 30, Okay, it will get rid of the 30, and we can do the same thing. We've got to be balanced. Divide by 30 on this side. Okay, and 30s luckily are easy to count by. We know 30, 60, 90. If we can count by 3s, then we can count by 30s. So I'm looking at this number, and 3 is too small. I can't make a group of 30 with just 3. But I can if I move over and I see 33. I can make one group. 30 times 1 is 30. And then I'll subtract. Bring down that 0. And then, this is nice, I have a 30. And I'm making groups of 30. So I can make exactly one more group. No remainder. Third, because 30 times 1 is 30. We're going to subtract, nothing left to bring down, and the zero means no remainder. So that means that P equals 11. He can pay him $11 per hour. Now let me show you another type of problem just to get a little more practice. So if I have a mystery number, E, or a variable, divided by 3, and I know it equals 18, it may be hard to kind of think backwards here and think, hmm, what number divided by 3 is 18? We might not know that. So instead of thinking about it that way, we can do the opposite operation. What is the opposite of division again? Oh, good. We can multiply by 3 and do that to the other side. Okay, that cancels out these since they're the opposite. And now I can just figure out my answer over here. So 8 times 3 is 24. 1 times 3 is 3 plus the 2 is 5. So the answer was 54. Okay, here's one for you to try. And just so you know, it's okay if the variable is on the left side 
or on the right side. As long as you try doing the opposite operation and get the V or variable by itself, then you'll be doing fine. All right, why don't you pause the video and see if you can solve this one. Let's check how you did. So I'm gonna do the opposite, which is gonna cancel that out, and the opposite over here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna multiply. 16, 24 plus one is 25. So that means that V equals 256. Great job. All right, awesome guys. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I hope you feel more confident about solving equations. And I will see you next week.